Here we are again at Majimaloka Buddhist Centre in Birmingham in the UK and we're here for our second interview with Urgyen Sangharakshita conducted by Dhammachari Maitrivia Nagarjun. So, good morning Bhante. Good morning Maitrivia. Bhante, yesterday you told us about uh, your memories with Dr. Babasaheb Ambedkar and he asked you to give talks on Buddhism among his followers. So did he speak about the possibility of conversion with you, Bhante? Hmm. I don't remember that he spoke with me at that time about the possibility of conversion. Hmm. But talk of conversion, possible conversion, was very much in the air at hmm. that time. Hmm. Hmm. And you address 10 months before conversion Bhante in Worli, Mumbai. Yes. 3,000 uh, followers of Dr. Ambedkar. That's correct, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, how did you find before conversion that event Bhante when you sp spoke on Buddhism with his followers? Well, that was the first time I addressed uh, Dr. Ambedkar's followers on the, the subject of Buddhism. Yes. And uh, I remember the occasion very well, because yes, it was uh, in Borley, mm -hmm. uh, on a patch of open ground. And I remember it was quite late at night, yes. because many of the, the people, of course, had been working and finished working very late. Mm. So it was quite late at night and uh, very cold. Mm. And I, of course, just had my, my thin cotton bhikkhu robes on. Hmm? Hmm. But I remember very well that I, I spoke on uh, the three refuges, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha, and on the, the five precepts, hmm. and made it clear that uh, becoming a Buddhist meant going for refuge mm -hmm. and undertaking to, to practice <coughs> the five precepts. Hmm. And I remember Bhante, uh, he asked to conduct you a ceremony of conversion. Yes. Can you please tell us something about that, yes. Bhante? He, 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 he did ask me if I would be able to conduct the, the mass conversion hmm? yeah. uh, that he had been thinking about. Mm. And I, I said that yes, I would be able to do that. Mm. In fact, any bhikkhu would be able to do that. Mm. But I advised him that it would be best if he asked uh, the senior most monk in India, uh, Uchandarmani, mm. to perform the ceremony, because this would give it more importance in the eyes of the Buddhist world. Mm. And I imagine, Bhante, at that time, uh, you didn't travel by air or the travels we experience in Europe. Hmm. So, uh, can you tell us something about the working circumstances of that time? You travel along with the bullock carts and things like well, that. Well, that, that, the bullock carts came a bit later. <laughs> but, uh, of course, I, I, I did uh, travel by train. Mm -hmm. um, it was usually third class. Mm -hmm. at, the, at the most it was interclass, in those days there was an interclass mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes travelled by bus and uh, occasionally also by bullock cart mm -hmm. and when I was trying to get to one of the remote uh, villages. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I had uh, the experience of different modes of, of transport you know, during the, the, the times that I was travelling around in later years among Dr. Ambedkar's followers mm. and doing my best to communicate the Dharma to them. Mm. And what did you eat, Bhante? How do you sleep? Where do you... Was it... I, 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 I assume that uh, I'm sure it was not comfortable and mm, quite... Uh, I, I was young, of course. I was still hmm, 30 and early 30s, middle 30s, late 30s, so I was still a relatively young man. Mm. and I'd been in the army, mm. so <laughs> a little hardship didn't bother me. Mm. And uh, 
I ate whatever food was offered. I had no difficulty with uh, Indian food. And uh, sleeping was sometimes a bit more difficult uh, because often there was a lot of, annoy a lot of noise going on. Mm. But I managed. Mm. Mm. And Bhante, you share a common teacher with uh, Dr. Ambedkar, uh, Guru Chandramani. Mm. Uh, so would you please uh, share some of your experience taking ordination from him at Kushinara? Of course, uh, I, I took from him the Samanera ordination, mm. not Bhikkhu ordination. But uh, I remember the occasion very well. I spent uh, just uh, a few days in Kusinara. Mm. I had walked there all the way from uh, Varanasi and I, I know that just very recently a, a group of uh, Buddhists, our friends, uh, led by uh, Mani Dharma, have made that walk. Hmm? In hot sun? In hot sun. And uh, Mani Dharma wrote that they were going to do it in robes. Eh? Mm. <laughs> in commemoration of my trek and that they would be studying the Dharma and teaching the Dharma on the way. So I was very pleased to hear that that uh, hundred mile trek of mine to Kusinara uh, had been commemorated in that way. So uh, I hadn't met Uchandramani before mm. uh, but I'd heard about him. Mm. Uh, he was Burmese mm a Burmese monk, and he'd uh, lived uh, in Kusinara, I think, since the beginning of the century. Mm. And he was well respected. And uh, yes, he was the senior most bhikkhu living in India. So I was very pleased to be able to take a Samanera ordination from him. Mm. I took it, of course, together with my friend Buddharakita, Mm -hmm. with whom I'd been travelling. Mm -hmm. And after we'd been ordained, he asked us to go up into Nepal mm -hmm. and visit uh, some Newa Buddhists who were disciples of his and teach the Dharma to them. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. Mm -hmm. But it was very hot sun, I think, uh, and you were putting your towel on your head because it was too hot. Can you please tell us about that? Well, was yes. it adventure for you? Was <laughs> <laughs> One could describe it as an adventure, um, yes. But of course, we didn't know that we were going to get ordination in Kusinara. <laughs> We'd been refused it in, uh, in uh, Saranath, hmm? Hmm. and we weren't certain that we would get it in Kusinara, because We'd not met Uchandramani before, he didn't know us, mm -hmm. uh, and so we had to convince him. Mm -hmm. So it, it was not only a, an adventure, it was a rather, the end of the adventure was rather uncertain mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. So we were very relieved when Uchandramani did agree mm -hmm. you know, to, to ordain us. Mm -hmm. And when did you leave India, Bhante? How did you feel when you left India? Well, that, that's a very long story because, well, in 1964, mm. I left uh, for England at the invitation of English Buddhists in London. Mm. And I worked there among them mm. Mm, for two years. Mm. Then I returned to India for mm. a, a farewell visit mm. and I decided that I'd move my headquarters as it were mm -hmm. from Kalimpong mm. to London. Mm. Mm. So did you have any wish to stay back uh, in India and work for Dhamma Bhante at that time? I would have liked to do that but uh, there were some objective difficulties. Mm. And one of those difficulties was that after Dr. Ambedkar's death, his movement, his political movement, split into a number of factions. Mm -hmm. Each of those factions had its own Buddhist wing. You know? mm. And uh, it was very difficult 
sometimes uh, working among Dr. Ambedkar's followers because uh, well, they were broken up into so many different factions mm -hmm. and I had the experience of the leaders of the different factions trying to capture me you know, for their side. Mm -hmm. So I, I thought uh, it's not possible for me to, to work or at least it's very difficult to work under those circumstances and meanwhile there is work to be done in London, mm -hmm. in England. Mm -hmm. But of course I did keep up contact with many of my Buddhist friends in India, mm -hmm. as, as especially <coughs> people in Nagpur, people in Pune, people in Bombay. Mm -hmm. And later on of course, some years later, uh, one of my disciples, Lokamitra, made contact with them mm -hmm. and in that way our movement uh, spread to India also among the followers of Dr. Ambedkar. Mm -hmm. So when in those circumstances Bhante, when movement was split after conversion, mm -hmm. were you having idea uh, to start movement in India in those days or uh, you thought it's the best to go back and start a movement from England? Yes, I, I, I thought the best thing that I could do at that time mm -hmm. was to, to start a new Buddhist uh, uh, movement uh, in the West, huh? mm -hmm. and, uh, but also to keep up my contact with my Indian Buddhist friends. Mm -hmm. In fact, originally my idea was to spend six months in England and six months in India, India. Mm -hmm. but that turned out to be not practical. Mm -hmm. But of course, some years later, I, I did visit India again mm -hmm. and meet Dr. Ambedkar's followers several times mm -hmm. and of course, give many more talks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Bhante, what was your experience of Buddhism when you come back to UK at that time? Well, at that time, uh, the Buddhist movement in, in England was very small. Mm -hmm. It was mainly concentrated in uh, in London. Mm -hmm. There were mainly two organizations. There was the, the Buddhist Society, mm -hmm. which had been founded by, by Christmas Humphreys, mm -hmm. and there was the English Sangha Trust and uh, Vihara. Mm -hmm. And of course, before I went to India originally, I had uh, been in contact with the uh, Buddhist Society, which had been founded uh, by, by Christmas Humphreys. Mm -hmm. So of course, uh, when I returned to, uh, to England for the first time, I, I again had contact with them. Mm -hmm. So when you went there, Bhante, you were having a different name. And you got a name Sangharakshita uh, from uh, Chandramani. Yes. Uh, Chandramani. So do you feel, Bhante, uh, Sangharakshita was born in India. Well, one could say that, yes, <laughs> yes. How do you feel, can you say something more about that? Well, basically I, I, I don't identify myself exclusively with any nationality. Mm. I, tr I try to be above national differences and national uh, uh, conflicts. I, I tend to agree with uh, Lama Govinda, mm -hmm. who described himself as uh, a citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the course of uh, so many years, I visited many, many countries. Mm -hmm. uh, many countries in Europe, mm -hmm. I visited the United States, Australia, New Zealand, mm -hmm. eh, and mm -hmm. so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I see myself very much as a, a citizen of the world. Mm -hmm. So of course I was born and brought up in this country, mm -hmm. so the, the, the history and the literature of, of this country are very dear to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, one might say that uh, India was my Spe adopted country mm -hmm. to the extent that I do have a country at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course I, I have a British passport because one can't move around these days mm -hmm. without uh, a passport. Mm. But of course I don't identify myself with uh, my British na nationality in a, a one-sided uh, mm. sort of way. Mm. Mm. So sort up your spiritual birth? No, I wouldn't say my spiritual birth was in India because my spiritual birth, you know, if I have one, took place 
you know, when I was 16 or 17, mm. and I came across the, the Diamond Sutra. Mm. Mm. That was uh, when my real mm. spiritual, spiritual birth, birth, one might say, took place. Mm. But certainly living and working in, in India, and especially with the followers of Dr. Ambedkar, um, has occupied a very important place in my life. Mm -hmm. And how did you feel, Bhante, when you heard the first time your name, Sangharakshita? I can't remember, but there's a story here. Uh, originally, uh, Uchandramani gave me the name of uh, Dharma Vakshita. Hmm? Mm. But then uh, he had a disciple already in Kusinara called Dharma Vakshita. Mm. So as soon as that Dharma Vakshita heard that I'd been given the name of Dharma Vakshita, mm. he rushed up to Uchandramani and said, oh, we, this will cause a lot of trouble. <laughs> His letters will uh, come to me, my letters will go to him, <laughs> my letters may be lost. Uh, so Uchandramani said, all right, let him be Sangharakshita. <laughs> so in that sort of unceremonious way, Mm. I received the name of Sangha actually. Mm. And Bhante, what did you experience uh, when do you uh, experience any difference between Buddhism in the East and the West when you come back to UK? Mm. There was quite a big difference um, in people's approach to the Dharma. Mm. Um, and I think in some ways to some extent there continues to be. Mm. Um, originally, of, of course, in, in India, um, Dr. Ambedkar mm -hmm. saw conversion to Buddhism as a means of uplifting his people, not only from a religious point of view, but also socially and uh, economically. Mm. But um, in the West, people's interest was, was much more with the practice of meditation mm. and the precepts and the study of Buddhist philosophy. Mm -hmm. So one might say that very broadly speaking, the approach in India tended to be more from a social point of view, mm. whereas in, in, uh, in the West, in, mm. in, in England, it tended to be more from a sort of well, not narrowly psychological view, mm -hmm. but certainly the, the the social interest or relevance that was present in, in India mm -hmm. was certainly not present in this yeah. country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not at that time, mm -hmm. anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, later on, of course, they developed the idea of engaged Buddhism, mm -hmm. but that's another story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you came here, Bhante, you must be full of experiences from India. So, did you find that uh, difficult to communicate with people on their individual need and the need for society we experience in India? No, I, I, I don't think I experienced mm -hmm. any difficulty at all. Mm -hmm. um, I un understood very well, you know, the, the, the plight of the, the Dalit people, including those who had converted uh, to Buddhism. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and I, I adapted my presentation of the, the Dharma to them. Mm -hmm. And the same thing happened, you know, when I came back to this country. Mm. I, I was very uh, aware of my audience. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I spoke in a way that was acceptable and understandable, you know, by them. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. I mean, for instance, in, in this country, I didn't need to say anything about the caste system. <laughs> yes, of course. Yes. Yeah. Mm. But of course later, I mean, many of our friends and members in this country mm. came to know mm. what was happening uh, in India. Mm. And of course were very sympathetic mm. to the, the new Buddhists, as they were sometimes called. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So comparatively, it might be easier to communicate Dhamma than India because of uh, different situation, Bhante? No, I, I can't say that I found it mm. easier or, my, or more, more difficult. Uh, mm. I think mainly because uh, 
when I communicate the Dharma, mm -hmm. I try to be aware of my audience mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. and to communicate to them mm -hmm. in a way that is intelligible to them. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've always done that, mm -hmm. whether I've been in India mm -hmm. or whether I've been mm -hmm. in, in, in the West. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I wouldn't say that I find it either easier or more mm -hmm. difficult mm -hmm. to communicate the mm -hmm. Dharma mm -hmm. in the West or in India. Mm -hmm. But the situation sort of it was challenging or well there are always challenges when you try to communicate the Dharma. Mm. Mm. And <coughs> Bhante, I'm moving a bit ahead about your new voice in Buddhist tradition. Mm. Uh, you founded a new Sangha. Mm. Uh, what did you find was inadequate uh, for modern times about the established Buddhist tradition that it uh, meant you believe that a new Sangha was necessary? Hmm. Well, I, I, I think uh, one very important factor was that I'd, I've seen uh, not only in the, the East, in, in India, but even in the West, in the very small um, Buddhist movement that already existed, that there was a much too great uh, emphasis on the difference between the, the bhikkhus and the lay people. Hmm. It was all almost as though, I won't say they were following two different religions, but it was as though the monks, the bhikkhus, were the real Buddhists. Mm -hmm. and uh, the, the lay people were just second-class Buddhists mm -hmm. and uh, the, their principal responsibility was to support the, the bhikkhus, they mm -hmm. were the practitioners. Mm -hmm. So I became very dissatisfied with that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I thought it did not do justice to the Buddha's teaching, mm -hmm. that the Buddha had taught not only bhikkhus, he taught lay people and he seems to consider lay people capable of the same spiritual development uh, mm. as, as monks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also heard Bhante that Dr. Ambedkar was uh, reluctant to say Sangam Saranangha Chami. So might be he was also disappointed with the uh, present bhikkhu order of that time. Mm. Yes, well, he'd, he'd been to Sri Lanka, he'd been to, to, to Burma, mm. and of course he looked about him, he mm. studied and tried to understand mm. you know, what was happening. Mm. And of course he had read the, the Pali scriptures, yeah? mm. in translation at least, mm. and I expect he was disappointed by the contrast between what he'd read in the Pali scriptures mm. and what he actually observed uh, being practiced uh, in Buddhist countries. Mm. Mm. What he would have thought of Tibetan Buddhism, I, I can hardly think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but later on you sort of convinced because uh, you also wrote Bhante in your writings that uh, going to refuse for Sangha is not the present Bhikshu Sangha, but the disciples of the Buddha, lay or monk. Can you say something about that Bhante? Well, it's, it's always been very clear mm. um, that when one goes for refuge to the, the Sangha, mm -hmm. it is not the Bhikshu Sangha, mm. it is the Arya Sangha, mm -hmm. which includes both uh, Bhikkhus and lay people. Mm. So that's always been very clear in theory, mm. but hasn't always been recognized in practice. Mm. 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 So then, uh, is the order you have founded, Bhante, is monastic or lay? Why did you uh, take this approach? Well, for the, for the reason that I've uh, mentioned, and also because I had identified the act of uh, going for refuge mm -hmm. as what made one really a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whether you were living as a monk or whether you were living as a lay person, what was important was that you went for refuge mm -hmm. to the Buddha, the Dharma and the Sangha mm -hmm. and try to put that into practice in your daily life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So it's neither lay nor monastic. So the, 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 the order I started was neither lay nor monastic. Mm. 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 Uh, we respect Bhante the uh, act of renunciation is important in spiritual life or in uh, as an important dhamma practice but why what we find generally hmm. uh, people respect monks and robes sort of cloths or living styles uh, more than whether they are practice or not so how can we address that religious psychology bante uh, and encourage people to go beyond it well, I, I, I think uh, many Buddhists in the West uh, have already gone beyond it. I think they're not so impressed by, by robes as they used to be, uh, whether yellow robes or red robes or black robes or robes of any other colour. Mm. I think that is very much the, tends to be the attitude of, of uh, Buddhists in, in the West uh, uh, nowadays. So I, I, I think even in the, the East, uh, including the, some of the Buddhist countries of the East, some changes are, are taking place. And uh, many Eastern Buddhists are be becoming a, a bit more critical than they were of traditional practices and traditional beliefs. Mm -hmm. mm. So are the traditions are not important, Bhante, in that sense? Hmm. Traditions are important, but uh, there are good traditions and there are bad traditions. Eh? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, well, the caste system itself is a tradition. <laughs> this is uh, what its defenders will say. We've observed this caste system, this wonderful caste system for hundreds and thousands of years, so how can we abolish it now? Mm -hmm. So we have to discriminate even where, where t uh, t tradition is concerned. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the Buddha himself has stated this clearly in the Kalama Sutta, mm. that don't go by tradition, hmm? don't go by parampara, mm -hmm. Hmm? Mm -hmm. and don't go simply uh, this way or that in accordance uh, with uh, respect for a teacher. Mm -hmm. Use your own intelligence. Eh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is very much the, the, the true Buddhist attitude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can certainly respect and cherish positive traditions, but some traditions, in the case of Buddhism, have departed from the Buddha's teaching, mm -hmm. so those are not to be cherished. Mm -hmm. But situation in India, Bhante, now people still stick to the traditions and uh, uh, because they link it with the legacy of mm. Buddha by seeing a mm. monk. Mm. Mm. And still the religious psychologies are quite strong in mm. Indian society. Yes. Whether they are Buddhist or even in non-Buddhist tradition, mm. uh, so to say. Mm. So sort of whole population or whole uh, 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 situation in the society is sort of stuck into their traditions. Yes, so one has to try to get people to see things more clearly mm -hmm. and more in accordance with the Buddha's own teaching. Mm. Mm. So, how your approach for new Sangha Bhante in such situation will be helpful or uh, uh, this approach could be communicated to the as much as people as possible? I'm, I'm not quite sure what you're asking. Uh, your approach of new Sangha Bhante where mm. society is stuck with the traditions mm. and the uh, uh, ropes and living styles. Mm. Uh, how new approach of your Sangha will be helpful? Well, the, the new approach is also an, the old approach in a way because it emphasizes character and action, um, not um, dress or outward observance. Mm -hmm. That's always been the, the case in principle mm -hmm. uh, in, 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 in Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one, one has to em emphasize that as much as one can. Mm -hmm. and try to convince people that that is the correct attitude to take. Mm -hmm. And well, some intelligent people will see that anyway, mm -hmm. because uh, they will see that some young man who be becomes a bhikkhu uh, wears a yellow robe but doesn't really understand much about the Dharma, 
Well, he is not to be respected more than uh, a, a, a lay person who is deeply versed in the Dharma and experienced in meditation. Mm -hmm. People will be able to see that for themselves mm -hmm. and make the comparison. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bhante, you yourself uh, spend some time under robe mm. uh, and when you found a new Sangha, mm. how did you find that uh, uh, transaction, Bhante? Well, it was a transition mm. Mm. and all transitions are difficult. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Mm. So, I'm moving a bit further, Bhante, mm. Mm. Uh, uh, because uh, Dr. Ambedkar also said that he was not entering into particular sect of Buddhism hmm. and uh, described that uh, what he practiced hmm. is a Navayana after conversion to the hmm. press conference people. Hmm. You may say it as a Navayana. Hmm. He didn't talk about anything about any sect. Hmm. So, do you see Bhante any similarity between your presentation of Dhamma as practiced in Tiriratna Bodha Mahasangha? Hmm and uh, what uh, Dr. Ambedkar's vision of Buddhism has expressed in the term Navayana. Mm. Well, I don't see our uh, new Buddhist movement as belonging to any existing Buddhist tradition. Even though we have uh, learned from them and been inspired by them in some cases, but I, I, I don't see us as being exclusively of the Theravada or Mahayana or Vajrayana or Gelugpa mm -hmm. or Pure Land or whatever. Mm -hmm. We are just Buddhist. Mm -hmm. And that's what I understood to be Dr. Ambedkar's attitude, mm -hmm. that we're just Buddhist. Mm -hmm. We're not aligning ourselves with any existing Buddhist tradition. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm not very fond of the term Navayana, partly because it has already been used uh, before Dr. Ambedkar uh, by a small group, I think it was of, of English Buddhists um, who, who wanted to uh, interpret Buddhism much more along purely scientific lines and they called that Navayana. Mm -hmm. So I've, uh, I'm not really therefore very sympathetic to the term Navayana mm -hmm. for that reason. Mm -hmm. But I, 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 I don't think it, I don't have the impression that the term is widely used in India, even by the followers of Dr. Ambedkar. But, um, I mean, he inaugurated with one cause a new yana in the same way that I inaugurated a new Buddhist movement. <laughs> so you could say if you translate uh, uh, Navayana into English, it means new Buddhist movement. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm. Because I don't think uh, Dr. Ambedkar might have uh, is aware that someone has used this term, but he quite meant that he is not entering into any sect. That right. was very... Mm. So it was important in that sense. Mm. Mm. So which sect do you uh, follow, Bhante? Which school do you feel is the best for India or for the world? I, I don't think that any uh, existing tradition is, is best for India, for the world. I, I, I think if I'm asked to say frankly, I, I, I think uh, the approach that I've developed in uh, our new Buddhist movement, I, I think that in the long run will be best for India and even best for the world. Mm -hmm. Because it uh, takes into account the modern consciousness and modern ideas without being limited by them mm -hmm. and while remaining faithful to the spirit of the Buddha's teaching. Mm -hmm. But the the traditions which are already existing, Bhante, like Hinayana or Mahayana or other sects, mm. uh, sometimes they feel uh, it's a challenge for them to see it as a new approach. Well, of course it's a with. challenge. Yeah? <laughs> and so, if they're intelligent, they will recognize that. Mm. 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 But yes, of course, it's a challenge. Mm. So, how do you uh, uh, how do you feel, Bhante, about uh, that situation of challenge among uh, your followers, your disciples? Well, are, are we talking now about the, the 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 challenge felt by other traditions or the challenge felt by ourselves? Challenge felt by other traditions. 
Well, we can engage in discussion with them if, if they're willing to enter into discussion mm. with us. Mm. And we can present our point of view and do our best to convince them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but usually, as far as I know, uh, they, they tend to avoid discussion. Mm. Mm. Or at least most of them do. And mm. stick to their own limited yes. boxes. But I mean, there are some on the fringes of, of all these di different traditions who are much more willing to engage in discussion, mm. um, both among themselves and also with us. Mm. Mm. And do you see, Bhante, any possibility that we could sort of work hand in hand or parallel or we should take our approach and... Well, it, it, may, it depends which area one is working in. Mm. I think if, if, it's, if there are sort of broader political and social issues that mm -hmm. we have in common, mm -hmm. then we can certainly work with, with other Buddhists, mm -hmm. uh, members of other Buddhist traditions and mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But of course, uh, as, as regards to uh, practices, say, which are specific to ourselves, of course, it's not possible mm -hmm. to work uh, with other traditions in that way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it does happen, say, that in, well, in, in Europe there is a European Buddhist Union mm -hmm. and uh, mem mem um, the representatives of different Buddhist traditions in Europe belong to that mm -hmm. and uh, they, they do work uh, uh, t together with regard to any sort of um, governmental or political issue which affects all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Bhante, particularly in the situation of India, mm. uh, you are very well aware of the Indian caste situation. Mm. So would your presentation of Dhamma as practiced in Triratna Bodh Mahasangha mm. uh, help to overcome the caste prejudices and uh, divisions? And if so, how? Well, just by practicing the Dharma. Mm -hmm. If you practice the Dharma, well, it's not possible to observe caste. Mm. That's what the monk says, Bhante, to us. Mm -hmm. That's what the many monks says to us. If you practice the Dharma, you come into Buddhism. We don't follow caste, but it still prevails. Well, we have to go on preaching and, and practicing more and more until we can convince people. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. Because uh, people, people are not going to agree with this you know, just straight away, mm -hmm. it's going to take time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And of course uh, there may be even some Buddhists who are still to some extent practicing caste. Mm -hmm. So we have to challenge that. Mm -hmm. Because people don't seem to convince that mere practicing of Dhamma will emancipate the caste. They see well, it depends what you mean by practicing the Dharma, because if you really practice the Dharma, mm. you have an equal attitude to all hu other human beings. Mm. So if you practice the Dharma, you can't possibly mm. practice caste system. Mm. So therefore one can say that if someone is practicing caste, he mm. cannot possibly be a Buddhist. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. And one should be clear about that. Mm. Mm and mm. uncompromising. Mm. Bhante people uh, means if we practice the Dhamma, mm. we can change our attitude by looking at the society. Mm. But how when society still treats you as a lower caste or untouchable, with however you are educated or successful in your life or however sincere you are in your own practice? Well, you have to, to stick to the Dharma. And you have to go on trying to convince other people. There's no magic solution. Hmm? Mm. You just have to go on making the effort. And when you consider that, even in, well, in my lifetime, tremendous changes have taken place. Mm -hmm. That as I as I've mentioned before, when I arrived in India, I mean, there was just a handful of of, of, of Buddhists. Mm -hmm. But now there are lakhs, if millions of Buddhists. So what a tremendous change just within 50, 60 years. Mm -hmm. So if such a big change is possible, well surely further changes are also possible. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't lose heart. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we should carry on practicing the Dharma ourselves and trying to persuade others mm -hmm. to practice the Dharma 
which includes, of course, not practicing discrimination in form of caste. Mm -hmm. But no magic solution, no magic <laughs> bullet. <laughs> for, for instance, uh, untouchability mm. is against the law mm. in India, mm. but it goes on. Mm. So just passing legislation is not enough. Mm. Hmm? Mm. We still have to go uh, teaching people, preaching to people and trying to convince them mm -hmm. uh, with the help of the Dharma. Mm that the uh, caste system is wrong, that untouchability is wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to have faith and confidence in our own position. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, realize that great changes have been made in the last half century and more changes can be made. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we are finding in the situation with this approach, yeah. uh, many people practice the Dhamma and goes to spreading same caste. Hmm. So the number of Buddhists are increasing among the same caste, more hmm. or less, hmm. or the followers of Dr. Ambedkar's. Hmm. Uh, and how it should reach to other castes, so that that appeal will be more strong, that caste discrimination hmm. is Adhamma in Baba hmm. Sahib's language. Well, uh, well, of course, uh, we have to be in contact with people of other castes, um, at least to an extent, before we can try to communicate the Dharma to them. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I know that uh, uh, in, Na in Nagaloka, um, Lokamitra has uh, started courses mm -hmm. for people uh, not just from the traditional Dalit communities, but from some other communities also, mm -hmm. to, to study and practice the Dharma, and then go back to their own towns and villages and try to spread the same message. Mm -hmm. So steps of that sort can certainly be taken. Mm -hmm. and, but, it, but yes, um, to begin with, the conversion movement was um, within uh, certain castes or certain uh, communities, but it mustn't be allowed to remain there. Mm -hmm. We have to go out and uh, try to communicate the Dharma to, to other groupings. Mm -hmm. And th there's no doubt that uh, there are many uh, educated, which means westernized uh, uh, Hindus who are sympathetic to Buddhism up to a point. Mm -hmm. So we should try to work with some of them. Mm -hmm. and try to bring them, you know, within the fold of the Dharma. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what we find Mante, when we reach to their caste, they are agreeing on the point of moksha or nirvana, mm -hmm. sort of some spiritual vocab and spiritual mm -hmm. language. Mm -hmm. But the moment issue comes to the caste, mm -hmm. it takes their own positioning sort of. Well, I, I, I came across <laughs> this attitude hundreds of times. Yes. But uh, I, I always used to say that uh, if there has been any real spiritual realization, uh, one of the, the fruits of that will be that you will treat all other human beings alike. Mm. Mm. So I don't believe in any spiritual realization that does not manifest itself in that way. Mm. Mm. Uh, Bhante, I would like to go back to previous question hmm. you said about Navayana. About? Navayana, Navayana. Ah. Where earlier this term, it was quite interesting to know. Hmm. People uh, used to define, I don't know who used that word before Dr. Ambedkar, hmm. uh, sort of reducing down Buddhism to the scientificism. And hmm. many uh, followers of Dr. Ambedkar as well relates Buddhism with the mere scientificism and rationality and radicalism. But sometimes they miss hmm. the spiritual essence of his conversion. Hmm. Would you please say something about that, Bhante, to us? Well, that, that is a great danger. And it's a danger not only in India, it's also a, a danger in the West. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some years ago, uh, Subhuti wrote a, a booklet about that. Uh, from which he got into quite a bit of trouble, uh, 
disagreeing with people who had, broadly speaking, those sort of ideas. So the the the, the, the two ex extremes, as it were, the there is the uh, extreme of of those uh, Buddhists who try to reduce Buddhism to just a, almost a form of scientific understanding, and uh, I mean those on the the other hand who want to to keep all existing traditions. So we have to follow a middle way, hmm? mm. and I, I, I personally uh, don't believe that we we have to accept uh, as Buddhism only those things which are in accordance with with modern science. Hmm? Mm. At the same time, uh, it is it is clear that that uh, Buddhism is a rational approach to reality. Mm -hmm. not an irrational one. Hmm? Mm. Um, but then also the same rationality that we exercise in connection with Buddhism, we have to exercise in, in connection with science mm. and refuse therefore to subscribe to scientism as distinct from a scientific attitude. Hmm? Mm. Mm. How do you differentiate that Bhante sign? Well, if uh, scientism is uh, taking science as the last word in everything, hmm? mm. not not accepting any other evidence from any other other source, mm -hmm. which in my view is not very rational. Mm. 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 In fact, uh, many many years ago, uh, um, must have been more than fifty years ago, I, I wrote a paper called Buddhism and Science. Mm. Uh, because at that time some uh, Eastern Buddhists, especially in Sri Lanka and in, uh, and in uh, Burma, were trying to say that science proved Buddhism. Science proved the truth of Buddhism. And I, I, I re rejected that attitude. Huh? Mm. Because uh, how could science prove, you know, something of a purely spiritual nature, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. represented uh, by Buddhism? But uh, the, the similarity between uh, Buddhism and science consisted in the fact that uh, in, in Buddhism we approach life ra rationally. Hmm? Mm -hmm. We approach the Dharma rationally. So in the same way, in science, there is a rational approach to reality. Mm -hmm. But that is a different thing from scientism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because this approach among followers of Dr. Ambedkar makes sense because of Hindu superstition, basically. Uh, and they try to reveal mm -hmm. that superstition is useless on the basis of mere scientificism. Well, one doesn't need to believe in scientism uh, in order to uh, refute uh, Hindu superstition. Mm. I'd even go so far as to say that scientism is itself a superstition. Uh, but what you need to refute superstition is reason, hmm? mm. Mm. rationality, mm. common sense even. Mm. Bhante, I'm referring uh, to your book Ambedkar and Buddhism, mm. where you wrote Bhante, I'm just reading two lines Bhante for mm. you. Uh, Ambedkar explained to me, means to you, hmm. at length his plans for the revival of Buddhism in India, hmm. adding that he intended to devote his rest of the life to Buddhism. Hmm. So, uh, can you say something more about what he discussed Bhante with you about the revivalistic hmm. plan for Buddhism in India? Hmm. I, I, I can remember only two, two things, that he, he was certainly going to go uh, t touring and conducting conversion ceremonies all over India. Mm. He, he certainly had that intention. Mm. And of course after his death, uh, some of his leading uh, followers uh, said they, they did the, the same thing. Mm. And uh, well, there, were, there were many quite large-scale uh, conversion ceremonies in the, the months and years following Dr. Ambedkar's death. In fact, I, I myself conducted quite a few, some large, some some small. Conversion ceremonies? Yes. Yeah. Um, 
but he also had the idea of uh, setting up a, a sort of uh, Buddhist college which would train preachers of the Dharma. Seminaries, Buddhist seminaries. Yes, mm. and uh, in this connection he was very appreciative uh, of the, the Jesuits mm, mm. and their educational work and of course also of the Ramakrishna mission mm. which also conducted a lot of uh, uh, educational and social work. So those were the sort of lines along which he was thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, himself conducting more and more um, con mass conversion ceremonies, but also setting up uh, a sort of college mm. where where people could be trained as, as preachers of the Dharma, mm. not as bhikkhus, eh? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as mm. preachers of the Dharma. Mm. Mm. Can you speak something more about what he meant by preachers of the Dhamma Bhante, not mm, bhikshus? Well, it, it would be people who had studied Buddhism thoroughly, mm. especially the, the, the Pali scriptures, mm. and uh, who had a clear understanding mm. and who were able to communicate that understanding in a way that people could accept. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That that was my understanding, mm -hmm. but he he didn't go into this in any detail. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does his understanding of this approach uh, was helpful to you, Bhante? Does it carry any significance to you? Well, I certainly found it uh, interesting, but of course I had my own experience of uh, of, of communicating the Dharma. Mm -hmm not only in India, but uh, in many other countries, mm. especially in, in this country. Mm. Yeah, because after conversion, Bhante, uh, there is a big energy for Buddhism, mm. but there is also vacuum. Mm. Buddhist vacuum, I can say it. Mm. And people are confused which way to follow. And uh, that, uh, I think, makes their understanding sort of sometime very shallow in mm. terms of spiritual understanding and practicing Dhamma. So that's the major problem uh, after immediate death mm. uh, of Dr. Ambedkar is created in Indian situation. Mm. Well, Dr. Ambedkar himself said 